All right, y'all, welcome back. Oh, today is gonna be a hard one. We are talking about why Christianity is declining and just, oh, it hurts me. It hurts emotionally. Like seriously, to talk about this, cause I love Jesus. I'm sure plenty of y'all love Jesus and it's just a bummer to have to admit that it's like, I mean, welcome to the endangered species list. We're, we're literally on our way out. We're going away. Just what, bon voyage world. Goodbye. We're going away. Okay. No, for real though. Uh, Christianity is on the decline. And I believe there are five reasons this is happening. And as we address each one, guess what? I got five solutions. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Mission Mike. I'm the worst missionary of all time. If you're already part of the mission team, welcome back. Basically y'all, we're a team. And our job, our mission is to save the world. And that's all there is to it. We don't, let's not argue about it. Let's not waste time crying about it. Let's just do it. So first off, I was reading this article today from like, I think it's like Arizona Christian University or something like that. And I'm gonna paraphrase, I won't read it to you word for word, but it had all these statistics of how much we are declining. Like, and it, it's bad. At this point in the last 20 years, the amount of Christians no, the, the amount of people who believe in God dropped from like 80 something percent to like 40 something. So less than like half the people in this country even believe in God is what they're saying. And my favorite statistic, I'll read this one to you. Okay, it says currently just 2% of Americans believe they're going to hell after they die. Is that not freaking hilarious and kind of ironic? The vast majority of people don't even like believe in Jesus. They're not saved, but everybody thinks they're not going to hell. And so it's like, yeah, yo, we got to discuss this stuff. Sorry if I talk weird, I have a little bit of a lisp or whatever, but we're going to be talking about the problem. So let's just dive right into this. So problem number one, I'm, I'm going to speak for a second from my own testimony. So I've been, I've been traveling and doing full-time missionary work for probably five, six years, something like that. And I almost to talk to like, thousands of people and it's my stuff is here in the US. And so I would always though ask two things before I began talking to anybody. And the first one is what religion or what belief, if any, do you have? I would just be like, hey, just so I know who I'm talking to, so I'm not like preaching at you or preaching to the choir or whatever. If you don't mind me asking, what what do you believe? What faith, if any, do do you identify as? And everybody Everybody, I'm talking the vast majority of everyone said they were spiritual. Oh, well, I believe in something. I believe there's a higher power out there. I, be I believe there's some kind of God. I believe in, you know, this, that, et cetera, whatever. But, you know, nobody was like identified as Christian or very few. And then the people that I met as Christians, this is the first thing I would ask them. I always ask this all the time. Have you ever, from one cover to the next, start to finish, actually read the Bible. And everybody, I, I think there was like, out of thousands, less than 20 people, no, probably not even that, closer to like 10 people I ever met who actually have read the entire Bible. It's a wonder we're declining. It's a, it's a wonder that Christianity is fading. Nobody reads the Bible. That's hilarious and ironic to me. That's like, that's, it's the manual, it's everything. You know, it's like trying to play Monopoly and instead of reading the rule book or how it works, you just pick up the pieces and kind of start playing this game and you may enjoy the game and you may be having a great time, but you're not playing Monopoly. It's like basketball, you give a kid a basketball and if he starts kicking the ball around and then picks it up and throws it in the hoop or whatever, he may be having the time of his life, but it's not basketball. If you're trying to do Christianity, if out reading the Bible, it's not Christianity. It, what, like, how can you know what you believe and what you practice? This goes to all of us, even like myself included. How do we know what to believe if we don't even read the Bible? So step one is nobody's reading the Bible. So step, step one solution, really easy. Read the Bible. And I'm gonna ask you this real quick. Have you done it? And go look in the mirror and then ask yourself, have I read the Bible? And I'm never gonna ask y'all to do something I don't hold myself accountable to. You know, it's the same thing. I'm like, how do I know if I'm going to heaven or hell when I die? How do I know? 
and somebody may tell you, oh, you're fine, and somebody may say this or that, or you can Google it if you want to. Google is like Satan's Bible. It'll tell you anything and everything you want to know, but it's very hard to decipher truth from it. In so many ways. And you'll go to a website that says you're going to heaven, one that says you're going to hell. Like, what, you know, how do you know? So, step one is we have to start with scripture, reading scripture. That has to then become the law, an authoritative source of our life. And, bef- and I would meet plenty of people who, this is one of the statistics. Uh, it's like l- less than um, 12% or something like that have a biblical worldview. And, and so it's like, and l- not even, it's down from 70 to 40% believe that, that the Bible is accurate. <laughs> it's like, and I would meet people like this all the time. Like these statistics may be garbage. Maybe none of them are true, but what it's saying is true on these declines. And so when we read the Bible, it's like, that's the compass, okay? Step two, all right? We have got to stop putting our responsibility on like other things or leaders. Jeez Louise, do y'all remember the election battle for Trump when he won and then the battle for the reelection? I swear every Christian I knew was desperate for him to win like he was gonna save the world and he won. And did it change anything? Do we have more believers? No, the world got more divided. The irony, you know what I mean? And so it's like, the point is, is and then we start putting it on pastors, we put it on books. You know, it's, it's we're putting our responsibility, we think our job is to elect a leader or find the right source and multiply it, you know? And it's like, I posted a video about John MacArthur's greatest tip for evangelism. And the comments made me mad because everybody out there is just debating over whether he's a false prophet. Half are saying he's false and the other half are praising him. Who freaking cares? Just take the tool from a man who's been a pastor his whole life, whether you believe in him or not, just take it with a grain of salt. He's not God. Like scripture is where we learn about God. So that's step two, is we have to stop arguing about which pastor is right. Like seriously, we've got to stop doing this stuff. And even if one was right, okay, let's say let's say Francis Chan or John MacArthur, whoever whoever you like, Todd White, whatever. I've heard of, as I would travel, people would always recommend to me pastors. Never heard anybody recommend scripture, but people would recommend pastors. Let's say one of them was right, okay? Let's say Joel Osteen was right. He was the the authoritative pastor or John MacArthur, whoever. Then what? We gonna we gonna build a church that's dedicated to the entire world and that's what we all listen to and bank everything on? It's like you don't need these people. You know? It can't replace our time alone with the Lord. So, you know, if that was another it, it I would just start filtering things more personally. You know what I learned on my mission trip? One of the best things I learned how to do is how to stop listening to everything. I got this like notification earlier from Uber Eats and I've been getting it a few times and they, and they were trying to like hawk deals and stuff at me. And I just went into the notifications and I turned it off. I got tired of it. I was like, why am I sitting here listening to this garbage? You know, it's like, and it kind of gave me an epiphany. It's like, we have to stop listening to like junk. You know, and whether somebody's right or wrong, it's like there's got to be a season in life where we tune everything out and just learn to listen to the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And the number one place you're going to hear him is in scripture. So it's like, so, I, you know, problem three or problem two is, you know, there's, there's too many pastors. So we need to stop arguing about it. And problem three is there's too much junk, you know, and it's like, and to kind of elaborate on that a little bit more, it's like we have study guides, we have books and I, there were times where I would attend, be invited to like a life group and everybody was quoting people and quoting books and they ask, have you read about this book and that and et cetera. And it's like, at the end of the day, who freaking cares? You know, what's funny is I had people try to explain stuff like Calvinism to me. I don't even know what that is. And I don't care what it is. What? Cause when you go out there and actually try to share the gospel with an unbeliever, do you think explaining Calvinism to them is going to be how they get saved? Is that how you got saved? You know, as Jesus said, we'll overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And he didn't say anything else other than that. Just blood of lamb, salvation, and your testimony. You getting saved, how you got saved. And no one goes out, even if you watch like clips of like street preachers or whatever. And even when I was out there, people are like preaching it, but nobody ever attaches their testimony. Nobody ever says like, this is where I was in my own life. 
And, and that takes vulnerability and you have to be raw and like real. And so, you know, we, we just, you don't need all this stuff. We don't need to complicate it. You know, we don't need all these study guides. Just get it out of your life. If you're reading a book about the Bible, put it down and don't pick up one single book, one single study guide, one single anything until you have read the Bible once. Okay. That's my advice. All right. I mean, you don't have to listen to me either. Okay. I would I, take a break from this channel if you need to and go read scripture, but just fill to turn the notifications off. Okay. All right. Number four, this is a heavy one. I had to ask myself this. So I'm going to ask you this too, because you're not off the hook either. Cause I love you. And I love you enough to like be honest, tell you the truth. How many people I'm going to ask you this. You need to be real, not just with me, with yourself. How many people have you shared your testimony in the gospel with? That's it right there, y'all. That's why we're declining. That's it. That's If there was probably any of these points that I feel like is almost one of the biggest ones, it's probably that. That's why. That's why we're losing. That right there. How many people have you shared your testimony in the gospel with? In the last week. I already know what the answers are. Okay, I like I already know it's zero. That was my answer for years and years and years before I became a missionary. How many in the last month have you shared it with? How many in the last six months? How many in the last year? How many in the last like in the last five years? And since you've been a Christian till this day, how many strangers, people you don't know, or people you're meeting, or people you know that aren't believers, have you shared your testimony and the gospel with? And this statistic is gonna get worse. It is gonna get worse until we do that. Okay, so here's the solution for that. I got a little, this took me a while to develop this. So I'm not knocking y'all, I'm knocking all of us, but that's the whole point. You talk about the problem, so we figure out the solution. Here's a little tip I wanna pass on. All you gotta do is ask for permission to share it. It took me a while to figure this out, probably a couple years to like refine this, but this is how I phrase it all the time. And I swear you're probably never ever gonna get a no. I don't, I think I had like three no's in all my years. And you just say, hey, you, you can totally say no. I promise you won't hurt my feelings. But would it be okay if I share my testimony with you in the gospel? If you're not ready to share the gospel portion, just say, can I share my testimony? Hey, would it be okay with you if I share my testimony? You can totally say no. I promise you won't hurt my feelings. Everybody's going to say yes. Like everyone. And then you just tell them your testimony. That's going to be far superior than any book or concept or ideology that you think you know. Next up, last but not least, number five. We don't know what to do and we don't know what our jobs are anymore. None of us know what we're supposed to be doing. We have no idea. We're just sitting there arguing and debating and just whatever. And it's like, we have all forgotten our destinies or we're putting our des destinies on the shoulders of others or we're fighting the wrong battles. Like I said, I, I posted a uh, like the video of John MacArthur and it's like, the comments, yeah, they made me mad. It's like everyone's just debating. Have you ever been invited to somebody's house for dinner? And can you imagine if they were fighting like crazy, would you sit there and stay for that dinner? No. So if an unbeliever comes to a video, any Christian video and just watches all of us debating in the bottom, why in the world would they stay? It'd be freaking awkward as all get out. You know, so I guess the biggest thing is just like, we have all forgotten our destinies and our jobs, and it's the Great Commission. Go to the farthest ends of the earth, preach the gospel, baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's it. So the solution to that, I'm recommissioning. I'm, I'm just redeclaring the destiny of your life right this second, over all of our lives, over the mission team. It is this. We are supposed to save the world. Period. That's it. We are supposed to save the world. So don't con it's nearly impossible to do really hard in theory, but the plan is simple. So just come up with a plan of action of how you're going to get out there, how you're going to share, how you're going to minister to people in whatever way you can. Okay. But don't do it with all these goofy, I, uh, we never, you know, use, use your actions and use words when necessary. Don't, don't listen to it. Just look at scripture. Just can I share my testimony with you? You would be amazed at how effective it is. And so it's like, yeah, that's about it. But anyways, look, if y'all need prayer, if you need someone to talk to, holler at your boy Mission Mike. That's what I'm here for. We're a team. We got to support each other. Uh, I'm a full-time missionary. Visit missionmike.com. You need prayer, you need support, whatever. 
or if you want to donate even a dollar keeps all this mission alive if you don't you don't hurt my feelings and if you don't want to do that at least you can do is like hit like subscribe or share or whatever and even then I, i'm not chasing any of that at the end of the day i'm just here to remind all of us you know we're gonna when they are all gonna stand before god butt naked and have to get a give an account of our lives and it's like the let's do the work our master has asked us to do and not let a really loud noisy world get in the way of that and let's not let ourselves get in the way of that so freaking love you guys holler soon Thank you.